The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 561 Fight After Fight Valise sidestepped a blow that shook the platform, her opponent wielding surprising strength for his size. He had an idea of how to use it too, never getting stuck in a bad landing as he jumped and hopped around. It wasn't hard to notice the green glow of his magic surrounding his legs. The unicorn was using his aura to enhance his jumps and speed. Smart. She guessed it wasn't coming to practice against an opponent who used tactics like that. Rather than taunting, she held her tongue, forgoing flashy backflips in favor of stepping out of the way so she could keep her eyes on him. This pony tried to mix up his fighting style. He clearly knew the dangers of being predictable, but he was still a one-trick pony, and she had dodged him for long enough to realize that trick's limits. No matter how he jumped and darted, she was expending far less energy, and he was growing tired first. At this rate, he would lose from attrition. He had to sneak something past her, and thanks to her cutie mark, Valet knew exactly when it was coming. Flash! With a pulse of energy, he dug his hooves into the stage and reversed momentum on a dodged counterattack far faster than should have been possible. Valet was halfway for a hoof swing meant to scare him away when he was already on his way back, and by the time he was able to look where he was going, she had converted her own momentum into a double rear kick. With a nasty thwack to his jaw, the unicorn toppled backwards, hit by an attack that should have been far too risky for him to see coming. Gotcha! Valet was beneath him before he even landed, ready to juggle him with a flurry of blows and keep him airborne until he surrendered. Nope, sorry! Amber's voice chirped over the soundstone, Valet and Maple reclining in the Immortal Dreams observation room with the artifacts sparkling in front of him. Willow sends her best wishes, but she's still isn't able to talk. I promise you'll see why in a week or two, though. This time, I really promise. Maple smiled faintly. Amber, we've already gone over this, and if there are secrets you need to keep... The stone went dim, and Maple sighed. The last time she got like this was in the months leading up to my 23rd birthday. She disappeared for long stretches of time each day, was extremely secretive, was cheerful every time someone confronted her about it, and it turned out she was spending that time making me a present. The girl built a small dock all by herself a mile or so south of Riverfall on the stream leading to the mountains as a monument to a trip that way that I could walk to whenever I missed the way things could have been. Not that we used it, of course. That wasn't long before I... You know. But still, it's exactly like she's being now. She knows she's suspicious and she has a surprise. Her smile returned. So, don't worry about her, okay? I know, Amber, and that's what's going on. Cool, Valene nodded. That's cool. Bananas. I just wish I could figure her out, too. Valene matched a punch from a huge boxing glove with a punch of her own, feeling her legs skid as her hooves failed to find sufficient purchase on the stage. Okay, not the way to do that. She ducked the next blow, a pot-bellied griffin with a spiky crest, mercifully armoring his talons with padded, fingerless gloves. She could contest him without getting stabbed, at least. Whiz! Swish! She dodged two more in rapid succession. This griffin loved punches and knew his way around him, but what else could he do? She knew better than to underestimate fighters for being old, but he wasn't giving her the feel of aged wisdom. Time to turn those strengths against him. Pop! Another jab shot forward, and Valet took it with her chest, grabbing on and hugging the big boxing glove with both forelegs. Served him right for copying her cutie mark. The griffin's muscle memory was too ingrained for him to react, and as he pulled to fist back, she shot along with it, curling her back upwards and bringing her hind legs up for a kick. With a smash, the griffin saw stars, and she relieved him of his glove, swapping it out as her hat and finishing him with a mighty boxing-gloved headbutt. Yeah! Look! Hey, look, Mom! It's her! A bouncing, excitable Pegasus colt knocked at a mare who was evidently his mother, finding himself dragged back by her aura. She's a cool one who fought Uncle! Vali blinked, folding her ears amid the crowd as she tried to exit the Colosseum into Stormhood proper. Yeah? Honey, please... It's not nice to draw attention to Cerusians like that. His mother nipped him behind an ear, shooting an apologetic and 
a slightly fearful look up at Valet. Please, ma'am, ignore us. We're not looking for trouble. Valet frowned as they scuttled away. Oh, come on! I don't bite! She sighed, realizing she didn't even know which fighter the said uncle was. Whether she wanted a popularity or not, though, she was starting to be recognized. Glory to Goshiva. May her love, as deep as the olden fold, and her virtue, as pure as the moon, be revealed to the entire world. Valet sized up her opponent as he uttered the familiar slogan she had come to associate with the Empire's most loyal guards and bureaucrats. He was a griffin of fine build and posture, and it wouldn't have been a stretch to guess he hailed from the guard as his background. A career fighter, likely chosen because he was the best in his platoon, she bowed her head for the saying, feeling this was someone she should show respect to. She was only a few battles in and was already up against opponents who meant business. Hmm. He cordially returned her bow. All right, pleasantries done. She cracked her wings. This griffin likely had a lot of tricks under his belt and moved with an air of experience. The longer she let the battle go on, the more likely she was to misread danger and be caught off guard, so her best bet was to end things fast. Wham! A streak of green trailed behind her as she flew a hoof into his space, letting it be caught by a talon. Her momentum uninterrupted, she twisted off him, forcing him to make a split-second decision between a counter-strike and defending against a follow-up. He took the ladder, snapping out a wing and wrapping it around her other foreleg, before it could hit the back of her head. For anyone else, it would have been a bad position, but Valet had a critical advantage he couldn't see. More time to think through fast situations. She rolled with the wing, flipping her hindquarters for the air and forcing an emergency dodge to avoid being mounted, the griffin releasing her first hoof so he didn't trip. That was all she needed. His other wing came in to pick up the slack, and as her free hoof baited it, the rest of her body coiled around beneath, slamming her rear legs up toward his belly. The griffin made a last attempt to dodge, but Valet clung on and threw him out of balance, grappling and restraining him as he tripped. Ugh, you're fast, he breathed through her headlock. Take your win with dignity, please. It was a request she had no problem granting. How did you know about this place? Cerise's jaw dropped, and she regarded Valet with a look of awe. Yeah, I've got a good contact. Valet shrugged, grinned, and stepped into a dark tavern, the Cerosian staffing the bar, giving them a won't-ask-questions look. I take it it's a good one. Senesei nodded, Gerardo and Slipstream not far behind him. It's not easy to find, either. As they sat down and ordered food, the yellow-maned pony looked around, eventually watching Valet. Thanks for inviting me, she said. I really do appreciate just... After what we talked about... Being friends? Uh, Valet shrugged. Yeah, I talked it over with some other friends, and the general agreement seems to be that you're cool. So, don't worry. I just, you know, have totally been there too, and it stinks. Well, like I said, thanks. Senesei beamed, then turned to Gerardo and Slipstream. And thanks to you too, since you haven't really met me before. Ah, uh ah, -uh, Gerardo waggled a talon at her. A growing network of friends and acquaintances is quite a nice thing indeed. Please, it's my pleasure. He bowed, still wearing his vaguely tuxedo-like uniform. Besides, a little bird told me you had troubles of your own to take your mind off of, and if there's one thing I know how to do well, it's treat an audience. Care to be regaled by the legendary saga of Einridge? Valet nodded along contentedly as Gerardo began. They'd discussed before Hoff what could be said and what to omit, and all in all decided it would be a great way to spend an afternoon. <laughs> an angry Pegasus struggled to get up, then fell silent, Valet standing on him after flipping him through the air in a final slam. The crowd roared its approval as Howe counted and declared him out, and Valet stepped off, allowing the defeated stallion to be carried away by officials. Hoo-wee! Howe swaggered with his rapier microphone, extending a wing and giving Valet a feathery thumbs up. 
My friend, I believe noble congratulations are in order. Out of all the challengers who entered, there are now fewer than 150 remaining. Counting regions that have been used to expel competitors, you are now in competition for a grand total of 87 slots. Are you in the top half of all region bearers who remain? I'll tell you one thing, you haven't lost a battle yet, not even had a close shave. I think a round of congratulations are in order. Let's hear it for Admiral Valet, the terror and savior of Iron Ridge. The crowd's approval intensified, Neon Nova's loudspeaker powered voice cutting through the den. Of course, the tournament mainstays have been duking it out too, you know. Sorted from who's best to who's worst based on their performances kicking the challengers out the door. So these last few battles will be the toughest. Bring your A-game, one and all. We're kicking the heat up a notch for an exciting finish. Valet nodded along, not overly concerned. Whoever she fought, she'd fight. And like House said, she hadn't come even close to losing and needed two consecutive losses to get out. Holding her head high, she trotted from the arena, relishing the cool darkness of the tunnels once again. Clang! A wooden sword trembled in Valet's grip, but didn't slip, captured in a vice-like gem that blocked it from hitting Starlight's face. The filly grunted under the pressure of holding her strength back, but Valet relented, fell back, and Starlight dropped a shield, and Valet immediately came at her again, swinging from the least predictable angle. Flash! Starlight's horn restored the shield, its notch and angle just good enough to catch the blade again. Starlight grinned, holding it there with a protected hoof, horn glowing. I'm getting stronger! Yeah, you are, Valet congratulated, grinning back. Now, in a surprise move, copying what she had seen Puddles do, Starlight dropped, channeling her horn's energy into the ground. A crystalline streak flowed its way along the sandy floor like fast-moving rainwater, congregating below Valet before the spell focused its power, freezing and binding her hooves to the ground. Starlight concentrated, holding both it and the shield at the same time, and looked up for approval, a trickle of sweat making its way into her brow. Valet whistled. Good stuff! She stretched a wing, flicking the sweat away and then extinguishing Starlight's horn. Not a lot of regular mooks who will see that coming. Are we done for the day? Starlight panted, taking a moment to drink from a bucket of water and then sticking her horn in it for good measure. Yep! Valet patted her on the back, proudly shaking herself off. And maybe for the next few days too. I gotta think of what to work on next now that you've pretty much got that down. Starlight glowed with praise, following her mentor up and out of the training room. The gleam of talent sliced the air, Valet ducking for the furious offense of a griffin who wanted nothing more than to carve her face. Talents weren't fair, but this wasn't about to be the battle that ended her perfect streak of never taking an unintentional hit. This griffin had blind spots, and it was up to her to exploit them. She pumped her wings, flapping in a speedy circle around the perimeter of the ring. Her enemy quickly read her speed, targeting a slash for exactly where she would be. So Valet hit the ground and rolled and jumped again, watching as her foe reacted quickly, yet not quickly enough. Talon stepped low, right where she would have landed, but Valet jumped over them, landing on the griffin's back. Only her beak could get her there, and Valet was well aware of that, a hoof ready and waiting to intercept the murderous peck weapon. Wood! The griffin twisted her neck to attack, and Valet twisted it further, catching her with a right hook straight from where she wasn't looking. This was a foe who was too dangerous to grapple, so she used the distraction to stomp with all four hooves at once, pounding her back into the ground. The griffin gasped, buckled, and fell, Valet preventing her from rolling mid-trip so her talons remained pointed in a useless direction. Ah! The griffin struggled, so Valet punched her head again, peppering her with blows until she couldn't take it anymore. With a final burst of strength, her adversary slipped away, but by then... They were limping, moving stiffly, and barely ready to manage an assault. Valet slipped straight through the flailing of claws, delivering a final face kick that toppled her opponent once and for all. Behold! The challenger stands victorious! How intoned, the griffin being taken away. 
three cheers for Admiral Volley! Maple stood with starlight in a well-lit street, stores with windows open to display all sorts of warm weather garments. You want to buy this? Starlight questioned, pointing a hoof at the dresses. Well, I think it would be nice, Maple murmured in self-defense. Besides, wouldn't you like to feel pretty? I bet we could make you look good too, and we're looking good for money ever since Gazelle showed up again and asked if we needed a stipend. Starlight stared, imagining herself with a bow in her mane. Maybe for Maple... Only for Maple. But she would do it. Well, okay, she relented, feeling well-rested after several days' break from sparring with Alay. If you really... Excuse me. A nearby griffin cleared his throat, dressed in Stormhoof guard armor, but looking like he was off-duty. Are you talking to us? Maple instantly shrank an inch and Starlight took a step closer. The guard smiled and waved, nodding at Starlight. At ease there. Just thought I recognized you. You're the filly who's always training with that one up-and-comer who's getting talked about in the castle, right? Admiral Valet? Yeah. Starlight eyed him warily, trying not to look outwardly suspicious. Whoa, easy there. The guard chuckled, turning to leave. Just wanted to say, keep it up. You guys are fun to watch sometimes. As he disappeared into the crowd, Maple shuddered and Starlight nudged her. Are you okay? I know you don't like guards. No, he was fine. Maple shook her head. I just guess Wallace was right about us becoming more visible because of the tournament. He was friendly, but people know we're connected to Valet now. Hmm, feeling good, Valet muttered to herself, stepping out of the shadows and towards the fighting ring. She had been waiting for this match for half an hour, but it had been suddenly delayed, her opponent missing due to a sudden case of food poisoning likely attributed to the foe he had been meant to face before. The tournament organizers had spent the time trying to find someone else for her to face, and she still wasn't briefed on the results. All right, time to pound another bad guy. Ha ha, how ominously greeted as she hopped up the steps to the empty ring. Admiral Valet approaches. The second round is well into its heat now, fearless challenger. Two or three rounds may be all that remain. He raised a red and black eyebrow. Have you come to bring what it takes? Yeah, I'm good. Valet adjusted her hat. Is, uh, I was supposed to get out here, right? Where's the dude I'm fighting? How fidgeted, somehow managing to make even the act of fidgeting grandiose. Oh, he's on his way. Suddenly, a gigantic shadow eclipsed Valet before moving to the opposite corner of the ring. With a storm of feathers, a presence appeared, the force of its landing nearly knocking her off her hooves. Being on my way is a thing of the past, young how, a voice boomed, and an enormous wing stretched out of the ring to pat how on the head, deforming even his massively gelled mane. Because I am here! A white smile twinkled, a mustache cracked, and Valet found herself looking face to face at Wallace Whitewing. Are you ready? End of chapter 561